Welcome to Slash Forward. In this episode, we're going to continue catching up on recent releases with the 2020 film, The Rental. If you enjoy a cheeky bit of voyeurism, so long as it doesn't result in a family annihilation, you should subscribe to the channel. Let's get to it. We open on a picturesque ocean shelf, overlooked by a palatial home being viewed by a couple of young professionals looking for a weekend getaway. They're hoping to treat themselves after closing a big deal, but then, surprisingly, considering their demeanor toward one another, Mina's boyfriend Josh walks in. Josh is actually Charlie's brother, and we learn they're planning a celebratory double date. Then that evening, we see Charlie discussing the trip with his wife, Michelle, and the conversation turns to his ex-con little brother and how lucky it was for such a violent burnout to score someone as vibrant and talented as Mina. Next day, they're on their way. In the car, we learn that Mina had attempted to book the property, but was rejected, and they wonder if it had anything to do with her name. But before they can decide on this, we've montaged our way across the state and have arrived at the property. They start scoping out some of the amenities and meet the caretaker, Taylor. How'd you get mixed up with this family? Uh... And he has a certain air about him that creeps everyone out. Josh and Mina discuss this and agree to let it go for now, and then hook back up with the others at the end of the tour, where Taylor continues to skeeve them all out, but also promises to return later with a telescope so they can take advantage of the clear night sky. With it weighing on her mind, Mina decides to come right out with it and ask him point blank about his decision making process regarding the booking applications. He declines to address this and walks out the door, stopping for one last peek before peeling out on his way up the driveway to make sure they know he is an absolute badass. The gang then tries to relax a bit and collectively bros out about the sick charcuterie board they have planned for later, and then gets psyched about taking a totally lit beach walk. But first, they settle in. As Michelle dusts off the duvet, Charlie logs onto the Wi-Fi, Mina checks the medicine curio, and Josh finally unpacks his dog Reggie, whose presence here is against house rules. We're left to wonder if this isn't partially because of the generally curious nature of doggos, who may be prone to sniff around under the back patio where the homeowner has stashed away a mysterious door with an electric lock, but they soon put that behind them to enjoy the evening breeze along the beach. Here Josh confides in Michelle that he's constantly worried Mina will leave him because he's not good enough for her. Michelle reassures him that he's certainly not, but that the key is to just give her some space to expend her creative energies with her work partner, which is what she does with Charlie, because the two of them are such a close pair, and their little company has so many different industries to disrupt. When they get back, the telescope is there, but inside the house, which Mina finds somewhat disturbing, and she wonders to the group if Taylor intends to come and go as he pleases whilst they occupy the home. Then, over dinner, they plan a bitchin' nature hike to a waterfall the next day. But tonight, the plan is to live like there's no tomorrow as Michelle reveals a special treat. She managed to score some smack, and despite this being her stash, Michelle actually sits it out. She's feeling a bit too tired, but promises a rager the next day so long as they don't go crazy. Then she goes off to bed. Now high on Molly, Josh absolutely destroys his older brother, as he confirms he's never felt more alive than when wrestling with a throbbing erection, so outside, Charlie one-ups his little bro with his knowledge of the universe, causing him to run off. In his absence, the will-they-won't-they -they energy of Charlie and Mina is off the hook. Of course, once Josh is found passed out in the living room and Charlie fires up the hot tub, all bets are off. After Charlie provides some compliments with assertively simp-like energy, and then they have a brief argument over who gets to experience the joy of the Jets, they find themselves in close enough proximity that they can't resist working on a possible UTI. But then Reggie runs across the scene like he's scared of something, and it's enough of a distraction to snap them out of it. We see that they're being watched, and thinking better of a tryst, Mina hits the showers. Charlie, however, pursues her, now intent on consummating their professional relationship. Since they did the deed in the shower, Michelle doesn't notice the stink on Charlie the next morning. It initially seems the only consequence here is that the two lovebirds are too hungover and tired to take on a vigorous hike. Despite her disappointment, Michelle agrees to an intimate day walk with her brother-in-law. This leaves the new lovers time to sulk and ponder what they did. As they do so, we see Michelle and Josh out feeling the burn in their quads. And through normal conversation about first meetings, we learn Michelle first hooked up with Charlie while under the influence and when he was still entangled with another woman. Josh confirms that this sounds awfully familiar to how Charlie got involved with his prior gal as well, making it seem like it's the only way he's capable of starting and ending relationships, and Michelle tries to shake this off as we see they're being watched. Back at the house, we find Mina engaged in the process of cleansing their living space as well as her own body, when she looks up and makes a simple observation that should have been obvious to anyone with eyeballs. Charlie big-brains the situation in which they find themselves, realizing that if they make a big stink of it, 
and it'll increase the odds that the footage of their coupling will be revealed to their paramours. They decide that the party who took the illegal footage likely can't do more than add it to his personal spank bank either. And then the others arrive before they can finalize any new lies to explain their way around it, which requires them to just let it go. Charlie finds that Michelle has returned, pissed at him, and Mina does her best to keep Josh out of the shower, complimenting his acrid musk. In the bedroom, Michelle confronts Charlie about his pattern of behavior, but he's like, that was so long ago, baby. What's that got to do with the here and now? Then Michelle emerges to find the tired group watching the Nature Channel, and she's pissed about the lack of drugging going on. Not wanting to waste their special weekend, she now goes in hard and solo on the stash. As she heads off on her rocket ship, the rest of them are puzzling and making quesadillas. When Josh drops a slice, we all come to the realization now that Reggie's been MIA for an unknown amount of time. So they all go off to search for the pooch while Michelle just grooves out and reveals that she called Taylor after the house to help get the hot tub running again. Charlie and Mina try to play it cool, but now Josh is aggrieved, wondering if that turd nugget might have done something to his dog as punishment for breaking the rules. The thought process of an individual untethered to reality. But when he arrives, the mood shifts dramatically. He denies all wrongdoing adamantly, and then exposes a good amount of crack whilst undergoing the hot tub reset, which paints him in a very different light. Back out front, he even confirms he's a dog person, and agrees that he would keep their transgression a secret from the homeowner. But all this goodwill is too much to process at once, and Mina directly confronts him again. This time, she marches him into the bathroom to ask him about the camera. Unfortunately, now she's backed herself into a corner as he not only denies it, but to keep things on the up and up, attempts to proactively call the police to help get to the bottom of the situation. In the ensuing struggle to try to prevent this, Josh walks in and lets the beast off the leash. Charlie manages to break them up, and then they have a powwow about what just happened outside. Mina comes clean about all but the adultery, and then she apologizes about getting her big strong man all worked up as we see they're being observed. Then, back in the bathroom, strangers entered the house and escalated the stakes a bit. So when they decide to check on Taylor and go ahead and report this whole thing to the police, they find themselves staring coldly into the stark realization that Josh beat a man to death. In the aftermath of this, Michelle is the only person who's still on board with calling the police. With her being majority outvoted, they begin the machinations of figuring out how to clean this up and make it look like an accident. They realize that the key piece here is the video evidence, and recognize that since it's wireless, the receiver is likely somewhere in the house. Michelle storms off to the bedroom while the rest of them get to work, taking every other step imaginable other than first finding the video, thereby exponentially increasing any potential future criminal charges. Charlie takes a break to try to help Michelle come to terms with what's going on, but she explains that no matter what happens at this point, she's complicit already. And he's like, come on, baby, don't be like that. Then the trio takes the body to the cliff to try to dump him over, but don't take quite a big enough dump as he ends up on a rocky cliff below, just short of the water. The boys try to use large rocks to knock him off, but it does not go well. So Josh rolls up his sleeves to climb down and take care of this business on his own. They try to prevent it, but he insists on taking at least this level of responsibility for what he dragged them into. He slides on down there and makes a quick offer to meet up with Taylor in hell and then pushes him over. Over. Inside the house, Michelle is distracted from her woe by the sound of running water, which she wanders off to explore. After checking the bathrooms and then ascending a spiral staircase, she finds the water sounds to be coming from the upstairs TV. Here, she is confronted with confirmation of her worst fears. Back outside, the gang returns to the house to focus on finding the footage as a figure bears down on them. But then Michelle pulls out, setting them to running, at which point she reveals she saw that Charlie did not pull out, that is. He apologizes for his transgression, but really would like to know where she acquired that footage. So she drives off, disgusted, and Charlie tells the others she was just spooked by everything, taking a little break. As she drives up the road, she pops a tire at an inopportune time for her mental health. After getting the vehicle stopped, she goes back to check what done it, and finds it was a result of an intentional act. Then as she tries to text back to Charlie, somebody runs up on her. But it's all good because Charlie gets the message and tells the others to continue as he goes to get her. When he arrives, Charlie finds the vehicle empty, so he calls her phone, which then lights up in the distance. As he goes to her, he confuses stumbles over her corpse, and before he can figure this out, he takes a crowbar to the back of the neck. Back at the house, hacker Josh finally cracks the code, but instead of finding a futuristic control room, they just find a bunch of old junk in boxes. Mina goes to look elsewhere, and then Josh gets a text from Charlie with a cryptic audio file of a conversation between him and Mina. As he questions Mina about this, the shower video then enters the chat. Josh is now livid, so when a door closes somewhere in the house, he goes tearing through it looking for his bro like a wild beast. 
He eventually gets to a closet door, which, upon opening, results in him getting wanged in the face by a hammer two times. The stalker then goes to find Mina, discovering evidence that she bailed out over the railing. But after he leaves, we see this was a trick, and we are provided the opportunity to delight in our voyeuristic tendencies, as she goes to retrieve her personal safety device. As soon as she leaves, she gets the chance to deposit it into his face. He then pursues her through the woods until she disappears in the fog, having reached the shoreline first. So, he goes home sad and starts the long process of cleaning up the house, diligently removing all traces of the camera equipment. He then takes a quiet moment to soak up all the fun times and memories he's made and gives a quick goodbye to Reggie. After that, we see him touring a new rental, which he sets up in a familiar manner, and as the credits roll, we watch and wait as he watches and waits for the perfect victims over time, making it abundantly clear your boy has got no job. I have a website set up where you can support the channel through donations or merch, and I'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. This was a good attempt, Dave Franco, a valiant effort. The rental was a well-shot film populated with likable actors who delivered their parts well. Ultimately, there was just something missing from it that would propel it to next-level status. There was plenty of time spent setting up and developing atmosphere, but there weren't any real stakes set early and minimal payoff in the end. As a result, I don't think the idea of an unfeeling serial killer with unknown motivations had quite the impact Franco might have been hoping for. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.